So I appreciate you set out some ground rules, um, keep things rational, and uh, I think that's going to help us. What I'm wondering is, uh, so for instance, you had said elsewhere, the New Testament, from the best, from what you can see, it's psychologically correct, uh, and that's you know quite astounding. I would say there's a lot of truth, and in, in the, your depictions of these stories elsewhere, you've pointed out like deep truths, you know, the, real powerful. So. What my question would be is, if we can say Nietzsche took a like an order of magnitude of uh, you know intelligence and you know depth to be able to predict what would happen in the next century, you know rationally, if the Bible's not the inherent word of God, what's going on? That's a good question. That, that's a really good question. I mean, I'm going to try to answer that rationally. But, uh, but uh, and as we move forward, but as I said, I don't want to leave people with the notion, because, you know, in some ways, this is something I've thought about, what I've been thinking about for a long time, is I can't tell if I'm a, uh, like an advocate of the religious viewpoint or its worst possible critic, because I am doing my best to make it rational, and there's, an, there's a reductionistic element to that, but I think that I'm doing that while also leaving the door open to things that I don't understand, because I know that there's... There's more to this story than I understand or can understand. And I'm laying out what I can understand and I'm making it rational. But I do not believe for an instant that that exhausts the realm. It's like there, there are ways of interpreting these stories that work in the conceptual universe we inhabit right now. But there's a lot of things that we don't understand. And what I'm, the thing I've found about digging into these stories is that the deeper you dig, the more you find. And that's pretty damn, that's one of the things that convinced me that there was more to them than I had originally suspected because things would click and I'd think, wow, that's, <laughs> that's really something. And then I would take it apart further and I'd think, oh, well, I thought that was something, but this is, this is even more remarkable. It just keeps opening and opening. And so I'm going to make it rational. I'm going to try to provide an answer to, and it is, I think you're right about speaking about Nietzsche and his capacity for prophecy and Dostoevsky's in the same category. It's like... There are prophetic elements to the Old and New Testament that seem to stretch over much vaster spans of time. And I'm going to try to produce a rational account of that. But I mean, one of the reasons that I think the New Testament is psychologically true, let's say, is because, and this is one of the things that's, that's, that's deeply embedded in the structure of the Bible. In, in the Old Testament, there's this idea, um, and I'm skipping ahead, that through a succession of states, the people who behave properly will eventually establish the proper state. And so the state is viewed in some sense as the, as the entity of salvation. But what happens in the New Testament is that idea gets, you could say, deconstructed. And instead of a state being the place of redemption, a state of being becomes the state of redemption. And so the idea that human beings will re be redeemed moves from the utopian state vision to the responsibility of the individual. And I think that's correct. I mean, I believe that that's the right answer. And I think that the West in particular is predicated on that idea because it makes the state subservient to the individual. I mean, there's a, there's a what? A dialogue, a continual dialogue. But in the final analysis, the locus of the divine is the individual, not the state. And I believe that... That's so true that if we don't act it out and believe it, then we all die painfully. And that's true enough for me. So, Thank you. yeah.